Hello all our friends! In research we learned that the new S-series have to address three main issues. Headband, ear pads and of course a better sound. We started with brainstormings and thought experiments and the ideas that actually were plausible or viable got into the hands-on phase. Let me show you around. Prototyping and development of the new headband for the S-Series started with the old headband. The old one ran. And there were many ideas from you guys how to stop the ringing, using Velcro tapes, connecting the two arches and stuff like that. But we decided to design a completely new headband. And this one, it's still two arches, uh, it's now flat steel, so it does not resonate anymore. And uh, the main focus of this uh, design is the clamping force. So obviously when you're using headphones, if you press them really hard uh, against your ears, the frequency response is altered, usually the bass will go up. So in order to achieve a really balanced response, we had to come up with a clamping force that will fit a lot of Head sizes, if you wish. As you know, the sound is impacted by air pressure, and air pressure is impacted by clamping force of the headband. So we tried many different prototypes. We kept in mind the visual, and most importantly, how does the design impact the sound. So you can see on the screen one of those tests, where we test the clamping force of the headband. The purple curve has higher bass and mid-range than the red one, who has the weakest clamping force. This was the final test where we determined what kind of clamping force we will use. Secondly, the microphonics, they are almost gone now. The resonance is obviously fixed. It still has to be very durable or even more durable than before. It has to be serviceable. And another important aspect of headband design is its weight. So it has to be lightweight enough so you can use your, your headphones hours and hours straight on. The ear pads challenge turned out to be the greatest of them all. They come in different sizes and shapes and materials and dampening factors. And all of that plays a great role in frequency shaping or you know frequency response shaping. So what we've learned from all of this sample is the fact that we have to construct our own ear pad. Designing anything is balancing act. It was the same with our ear pad. There were three main points we have to consider. First was size, second was materials, and third one, how does everything impact the sound? So how do they sound? In the second stage, we ordered a lot of ear pad samples. We test them all to see how the different materials and sizes impact the sound. As you can see on the screen, this is one of those tests. The headphone was completely the same, we only changed the earband. But the frequency responses are all over the place and it's hard to predict why that happened. That's when we knew we have to make a completely custom earband. And we went with 25 millimeters in depth, so they are going to be a little bit thicker than now. 90 millimeter in outside diameter and 60 millimeters inside, so again, more room for your ears. And when it comes to materials, we decided to go with a combination of velour and polyethylene leather. Designing the frequency response or acoustics in a headphone is actually very much a balancing act between the ear pads, the volume, the shape, and of course, protectors of the speakers are also uh, flow resistors. And we explored a lot of different designs and shapes to measure all of it. And funny enough, many times it happens that the fundamental frequency response between two or three or four of these is actually the same. But when you look at the total harmonics, there's a lot of differences between those. So the final result is actually four different filters, including meshes like this um, at the back of the speaker and three different in the front of the speaker. So this was the final stage of development. We used everything we learned so far to fine tune the frequency response and the overall sound of the headphones. By changing different static meshes and by that controlling the airflow, we can precisely impact the higher frequencies of our headphones. So on the screen you can see one of those steps. The blue line is a mesh with the lowest airflow and the red the highest. As our progress indicates that our headphone is balanced, we had to find a perfect mesh so the frequency response in the higher spectrum would be balanced. In the next vlog we are going to show you how all of these pieces work hand in hand.